This course is composed of 10 modules. We'll begin with an introduction to low-code, no-code, and then we'll examine low-code versus no-code versus pro-code. The low-code and no-code ecosystem is next, and then we'll look at the advantages and benefits. There are also potential pitfalls and challenges for low-code, no-code, and we'll look at how to create multiple platforms for complex applications using LCNC. The low-code, no-code culture is important, so we'll take a look at that, and also how to increase productivity with low-code, no-code. The low-code, no-code prototyping, minimum viable product, and design thinking module, we'll talk a little bit about each of those subjects, and we'll conclude with some ideas about summing up what we've talked about and where to start on your journey with low-code, no-code. Here are our objectives for the low-code, no-code course. We'd like to help you understand the low-code, no-code ecosystem and obtain a good appreciation of the advantages, weaknesses, and challenges of low-code, no-code. We want you to learn who the citizen developer is and what the cultural ramifications are to your organization. We also want to help leverage productivity enhancements for IT developers and understand some of the leading tools and platforms for low-code, no-code. Furthermore, we want to help you understand and contrast low-code versus no-code versus pro-code for developing enterprise applications. We want you to leave here with a good understanding of the various low-code, no-code categories, such as BPM, database, integration, web, mobile, and so forth, and innovative and accelerated application development. And finally, we want to learn how to create and deploy minimum viable products with low-code, no-code. Well, let's take a look at some of the differences between no-code and low-code. No-code's limitations mean that that's typically used for front-end cases. And by that, we mean things like the development of forms and simple databases where the forms are stored. So unless you're developing only the symbols applications that require very little in the way of customization, low-code will probably be your best option. Low-code is good for developing sophisticated applications that can run mission-critical processes, but it's also great for building mobile and web apps that require more complex integrations. But there's room for both, or at least a combination of both in the modern enterprise. Both kinds of platforms provide a competitive advantage for developers and organizations that employ them. They have the simplicity to get apps up and running much faster than hand coding, but low-code does require some knowledge of coding. Now, new low-code, no-code applications pretty much don't sadly with any security risks or compliance issues because they're made for today's modern environments. But you do have to be careful because that's probably not true in every case. In a one-day course, I can't even begin to address all these tools. That's mission impossible. But I can show you a few, and we can have some workshop time with at least four of them. You see them circled in red here, the ones in the course today. Zapier, Airtable, WooCommerce, and Wix.